Hello, welcome. I'm going to talk today about the sort of people that one should avoid who might be detrimental to us, however much we want to help them, or some of them actually toxic for our uh, well being. This in spite of the fact that we are generally, most of us, compassionate and we want to help someone who is in trouble or whatever the situation might be, a friend, a family member, um, a colleague at work, but we need to, I, I, I want to talk about how to put up boundaries so that uh, you don't hurt yourself while trying to help others. I have thought about this because um, I, I was actually reading about the Stoics, it's a philosophy, uh, pagan pre-Christianity, although we continued um, since then. And uh, I am reading I'm going to give you um, five, today, five different types of person who perhaps you should consider your relationship with them, okay? And it's following on this Stoic philosophy. Just one minute just to tell you about the, Sto uh, the Stoic philosophy. Um, this is obvious. Uh, this is pre-Christian. There are three major uh, philosophers who talked about this: how to live the good life, the good life in the Greek sense, yeah, not in the present-day sense of having seven cars and three swimming pools. The good life, at peace with yourself and those surrounding you. There are three main people associated, uh, there are so many, but three main ones. One is, you heard of him most probably, even if you're young and you haven't had time to read any philosophy at all, the Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Okay, that's a complicated figure, but you probably watched the film Gladiator and the Emperor there, okay? Uh, he wrote his thoughts about life every night he recollected himself and wrote about what he had learned that day. He said that he couldn't, he couldn't sleep well unless he sort of recollected himself and, and to see whether he grew in this uh, living the good life, as it were. Those it's called now the meditations, but um, yes, meditations, but, but it was really like a journal to himself. It was never intended for publication. Uh, another very important uh, philosopher is Epictetus. He was a slave and he had to learn how to cope with pain and humiliation and all that kind of thing and not to be affected himself inwardly by it. He was actually uh, able to create his own school of philosophy much later on, long story, but Epictetus is a very important one. And the third one is the philosopher Seneca, um, already in Roman times. and. Um, he was he was born in Cordoba in Spain, I believe. Um, he is known because he was actually the tutor to Emperor Nero, <laughs> of all people. And you say, "Way, <laughs> hold on here," because if this philosopher was the tutor. <laughs> It was Nero's tutor. What on earth did he teach? Well, uh, yeah, but not quite because he came in quite later on. He, uh, he, Nero's mother brought him in. He was already a well-established philosopher and so on. And he brought him 
uh, in to tutor his uh, her son because his son Nero was already showing that mentally he might not be altogether there and in the sense of um, a capacity for moral uh, discernment wasn't there but also for political reasons because he wanted to show the emperor that her son Nero could be the next emperor and so on. They're very complicated but in any case Seneca had to commit suicide at the end ordered that suicide by Nero himself so you see the kind of person but anyway here, here you are Marcus Aurelius uh, Epictetus and Seneca now, if you put a lot of their writings together, this is what I'm going to do today. Just a few personality types that perhaps you should consider avoiding altogether or um, refraining from wanting to help all the time because it might be detrimental to your own mental well-being mental, psychological, spiritual, and so on. So the first one is, um, and I, also, I also thought about doing this because of late I found myself talking a lot about politics and what is happening in the world at the moment. And my channel is called Interpreting Tradition and it was always my intention to talk about what others had said in the past that we could apply today, but not to get so involved in what is actual, you know, all the wars and everything. I can't help it sometimes because the situation is so grave, you know, in many parts of the world that obviously I am affected by it. and. And when you are deeply affected by something, you just want to talk about it. You know, imagine you just uh, gave birth, you <laughs> you know, and of course you want to talk about your baby. Uh, the baby smiled, the baby did this, and then no one else is interested in it, but uh, you need to talk about it. Or if you win the lottery, you need to talk about it when something is so has become so much part of your emotions yes so i i couldn't help myself and i did a lot of politics there semi-politics i don't know what it is a little bit mixture of everything but in any case i want to see if i can go back a little bit to 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 the past and and uh, to what we can learn okay okay so um many types of uh these personalities but I'm going to just I think I'm going to talk about five today because I'm not going to have time for all of them and just uh, concentrate on five and perhaps tomorrow I'll do another five and that will be sufficient I think um, but these are uh, for you to consider the interact uh, I'm going to read from my notes the interaction um, Oh, that you have with people when your compassion, in other words, your willingness to help, might be ineffective or even harmful to the person that you're trying to help and to yourself. So you need to balance your desire to help or to engage. Uh, relying perhaps a little bit more on wisdom and caution and this is what the Stoics taught us it's not it, the Stoic philosophy does not necessarily go against Christianity it's just that Christianity goes much further than this okay this is about practical ways for your daily life it's not a religion as such okay first type those who refuse to help themselves put limitations there, put boundaries. It seems harsh to say that, but the idea of self-help is important. The idea of, you know, individual responsibility is important. Helping 
someone or going out of your way to help someone who is not ready himself to take steps to change can actually be counterproductive. Consider that. It's like pouring water into a cracked glass or something. A friend who always complains about the same problem without even taking concrete steps to remedy that situation. So, of course, you want to help and you, you want to offer advice, uh, emotional uh, advice, uh, practical solutions. But if he is not willing, your advice is just going to be an echo in, 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 in the void, as it were. Um, try to help those who are truly committed to helping themselves and growing. If they are not willing to, to do that, if they are, you see that they're constantly refusing to take concrete steps, put boundaries there. That's personality type number one, as it were. Uh, personality type number two is those who constantly, continuously seek attention and approval and validation from others. It is easy for most of us to feed to feed this in this um, incessant this continuous need because we want to help. They need validation from others all the time. The Stoic philosophy suggests that emotional independence is extremely important for us and for others. If you continue to give advice and compassion and help to these people who need the approval of others all the time, by giving it constantly, you are actually encouraging that dependence on others, that need for external approval all the time. And it creates an unhealthy cycle where this person becomes more and more dependent, which is not what you wanted in the first place. They become dependent on the approval of others for their self-esteem. So you can listen to them, but do not encourage this dependence. Listen, but do not advise, okay? Um, let's see. Um, personality type number three those who you want to help, but they are engaged in self-destructive behavior without a wish to change. Again, it is natural for us to want to help someone who we know is self-destructing. A friend, a colleague, a family member. Think of the obvi obvious example of a drug addict, for example, okay? If they are involved in this self-destructive behavior, to give them advice is like throwing perhaps a life jacket to those who want to drown and refuse to swim. It is ineffective, but it will also drag you into emotional exhaustion. So maintain helpful boundaries, the Stokes would say. You cannot force someone to change if they are not willing to do so. Accept that some things cannot change or you cannot change them. And this includes 
the behavior and the choices that others have made. Because our Christian conscience says, oh, you know, hold on. Yes, <laughs> that means to keep limits does not mean necessarily that you are abandoning the person. You can express your concern, but, or you can find professionals who will help. But do not let yourself be so involved that it harms you. It harms you in the end. And you end up, if you do that, not with one person being hurt, but with two people being harmed. So understand the uh, limits of your ability to help and recognize that you could be, with the best intentions, making matters worse. You know about hell being paved with good intentions and so on. Personality type number four, those who are manipulative or abuse the kindness of others. In our wish to be compassionate, we make ourselves sometimes vulnerable to manipulation. So vigilance and caution in our interactions, that is what we have to keep our eye on. Our compassion should not be exploited for selfish ends for others, the selfish ends of others. A person who is always, always seems to be in need of something from you, but never really shows gratitude or willingness to return that favor. They are very adept at playing with your emotions, you know this. They are very adept to elicit your sympathy or even elicit your guilt if you don't help them, just to get what they want. And think not only of a family member or a friend of a colleague at work, think of, extend this to politics, to the realm of politics and politicians. You can extend this, these personality types, I mean, you can find them everywhere. Acknowledge that this is toxic behavior. You need to develop yourself strong self-awareness and understand your own limitations. Ask yourself, why do I feel obligated to help this person? And is my help used in a constructive manner? And is it appreciated? And this will help you to see if the relationship is a healthy one or not. Learn to say no firmly, respectfully, but firmly. Firmness and self-respect are essential here to preserve your integrity and your dignity. This does not mean being suspicious or cynical about everything and everybody, but simply judicious and, and mindful. In order, use caution for your self-respect, your integrity, and your dignity. Um, personality type number five. These are the constantly negative people, toxic people. Surrounding ourselves with constant negativity will not only hinder our own growth, you understand that, but also empty us and deplete us of our energy and optimism in life. Think of the news too, continuously. A friend who's always complaining, always a, a friend who always sees uh, the, the, the glass half full, 
empties you. Yes, our first instinct is to try to comfort that person, to reassure him, but we have to recognize that this constant negativity is also going to affect our own mental, psychological, spiritual well-being. So the point is to set clear boundaries again. Limit the time spent with these people if, if you have to be with them. Do not engage emotionally. Remember that ultimately you are not responsible yourself for their happiness or for changing their perspective on things. At the same time, think also why you might be attracted more often than you would like to to people like this and that is a question for you for me for everybody so practice inner peace as it were within yourself before you attempt to help others so surround yourself with people who value you with people who support you who share your values. Surround yourself with people who inspire you rather than drain you. Okay, I'm going to leave this five here and tomorrow perhaps I'll do a few more but I will talk a little bit more about Seneca and Epictetus and uh, don't know so much about Marcus Aurelius so that is why I've got my books here. I always show you books, but look, Seneca is Dialogues and Letters. Um, Epictetus, Discourses, Fragments, The Handbook. <coughs> Marcus Aurelius, Meditations. These are all reasonable books. I have another one here. Um, all the letters by Seneca. So I'm reading quite a bit, okay? And as I'm reading, I'm taking notes because don't think that I am so, <laughs> so wise that I just think of it myself, all of this. I'm reading and I'm taking notes and so on. But I will share a little bit more about the Stoic philosophy with you tomorrow. Thank you for listening. And um, if you care to do so, like and all that. Okay. Bye-bye.